All right, well, I think we'll just let the last couple of people get in here as they get in here, but we'll get started. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for September's Brunch and Learn. Today, we have election specialist Leanne Oliver from the North Dakota Secretary of State's office with us to go over a quick hour of campaign finance training. Leanne has worked in the Sec Secretary of State's office for 34 years, with 32 of those being in elections. So I think we are in good hands today. Um, today, she will be covering the ABCs and beyond of the new campaign finance requirements for school board members. During a presentation, you may pose any questions you have in the Q&A feature, and I will do my best to moderate them in as we go, or we can wait till the end for questions. So I'll hand it over to Leanne now. Good morning. Thank you all for taking part in the webinar this morning. Um, like, I, like she said, I'll, I'll get started, but if you have any questions, write them in, um, stop me, type it in. You've heard it before. There's no uh, dumb question. So please ask, ask away. Um, first of all, we'll start out uh, last session. Uh, the House Bill 1257 uh, was passed and this only affects districts with student enrollment of a thousand students or more, okay? and candidates in those districts, they must file a campaign uh, contribution statement. It's a paper form. It's not done online or anything like that. <clears throat> the, the form is found on our website at votes.nd.gov and just under the campaign finance section. It's just on the left-hand side. It's easy to see. You click on that and the form will be there. As far as what and where to file, the form number um, is 53970. The candidates themselves, they will have two reports to file, if not three. Uh, they'll have what is called a pre-primary that goes from January 1st through 40 days before the election. Uh, they will have a year-end report, uh, and that of course covers the entire year. And some will have a 48 hour report. It's probably going to be in the bigger districts, if at all. Uh, that it only needs to be filed if a single contribution is received over $500. And that is only within the 39 days before election. Uh, just a little background, which will make that make more sense to you, would be uh, in the past, the report covered through 40 days before the election. And then if candidates receive contributions within the 39 days before the election, no one knew about it until the year end. And people didn't think that was fair in case somebody came in and gave someone a thousand. Now all of a sudden they have you know, ads on TV the week before. So just kind of some background why the 48 hour statement is there, but you might not have to worry about it. Just wanted to, to make sure you knew that that existed. And these files or forms, I should say, are filed with uh, the school business managers, okay? So they're filed with you. I did already go over um, when to file and it goes through 40 days and they can start to file with you the 39th day before the election through the 32nd day before the election. They can't file earlier I get that question a lot. Well, I'm not going to get anything, uh, so can I just file it now? Uh, no, because the law says that the filing deadline closes um, through the 40th day before the election, so you can't file um, earlier than that. Uh, the reporting from January 1st to 40 days before the election, again, is under the pre-primary report. And next year, the election day is June 11th. So the first day that they can turn in their, their uh, campaign finance papers with you is May 3rd, and the deadline to file is May 10th. And you can, if they miss that deadline, like it has down there, fines can be imp imposed on candidates who fail to file. What I do, I guess, just a side note, it's not required by law, uh, but we send out um, I send out reminders because really it benefits us as the filing officer as well as the candidates uh, in case they forget. Uh, I 
what we do is when the candidates file, we give them a receipt letter. And in that receipt letter, there's just a, a little paragraph that talks about the need to file campaign finance. Um, we also, if they give us emails on their filing papers, uh, we will send an email or even send a letter with a blank form saying this needs to file be filed by this date. Again, not by law, but I don't want to chase people saying you owe me $25 or $50. Uh, so I just kind of do something beforehand so it's easier on them and us. As far as what to report, the, the itemized contributions in excess of 200, I'll go over this a couple times, it'll make sense. Uh, if they receive something over 200, it's itemized on this report. They just can't put down the total. If it's 200 or less, so if everybody, if five people give them $200, they will put down a lump sum of 1,000 uh, under the contributions of 200 or less and a statement must be filed even if there are no contributions to report because you don't get people saying, oh, I know they received money or this or that. And that's why they have to go on, on record saying they received this or they received nothing. I guess another thing I wanted to mention that's not up there, uh, contributions that these candidates receive can only be spent on political purposes. So if they receive contributions and something's left over, they wanna give it to a nonprofit or something like that, they can't. They have to uh, spend that money for political uh, purposes and they can't take money. Um, this happens in cities and some schools from that they don't know that they can't. They can't take it from corporations or LLCs, a lot of times, say farmers will, will write a check out of their, their uh, farming account and they can't accept those. It has to be from a personal, uh, a personal statement. Also, the legislature a couple of years back uh, added that there has to be a separate bank account for campaign funds so that they don't co-mingle so they know this came in for, uh, for, for candidates. Campaign finance, this is what went out. And what the candidates have to keep track of is uh, the funds that they contribute to themselves. So if they're spending their money, their name is going to be on their own report saying I spent $250. Uh, they have to keep track of the names, addresses, the date they received money, and how much they received. So that if one person gave $50 and then they gave another 200 later, they have to itemize uh, that. So it's just a, a record, record keeping. And as far as amounts contributed, I get this question, if someone gave me money three times, do I put it down three times? No, you accumulate it and you put the last date that you received money. And it's really short, uh, but there's not a lot to it. It's just that it's an accounting system that is filed with you. So if you have any questions whatsoever, um, you can ask them now. Uh, you can always give me a call if it gets down to it and, and you forget, or if candidates have questions, um, I'm open to answer those too uh, if it gets closer to your guys' election. So if there's any questions, I will be happy to answer them. And I think I lost Taylor. Oh, can you hear me, Taylor? 
Oh, there you hear go. You. Oh, can you hear yeah. me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, it would go in and out a little bit, but I can hear you fine. I think um, maybe your mic needs to be a little bit closer. There, like a telephone, old time telephone operator. Yeah. My, I'm not a good reference. I have large speakers, so there's <laughs> a reference here, but for others. Is there a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's up there? But hopefully it wasn't like too confusing and it's it's really not not difficult it's just if if um, you're bigger and the candidates have money coming in they just have to keep track of it just like a a, a check register basically mm -hmm. um could we go over the end of year report a little bit okay yep the end of year the report is basically the same as as a, a pre-election a pre-primary report it just covers more time so the the pre-primary goes from january 1st through 40 days before the election then the year-end report goes from january 1st through december 31st and it's filed with guys by the last day of january so they have the whole month of january to get that that form put together and it's keep track of the same the same things and if they say well it's a double up because you know both those reports start from January 1st yes the legislature changed it <laughs> to all have all those reports start January 1st so your year end will have some of the same as on your pre-primary report and is that for all elections or what if they received nothing and had submitted the contribution report with nothing? Okay, if they receive, if they filed the pre-primary that says no reportable contributions to report um, for their pre-primary, great, they file that with you. When the year end comes, they have to file that also and they'll just mark the same box, no contributions received for the reporting period and turn that into you. So there's probably gonna be many candidates that it's going to be paperwork for but that's what the the bill passed and that's what we have to do okay. and they're open to the public if someone i get that i'm just trying to go through questions i get on the phone um if they pay for the copies they can get a copy of someone's campaign finance report And if they fill it out, they can um, scan it into you too. You don't have to receive it originally. Mm -hmm. Trying to see if there's any common kind of elections questions here that maybe we've had. Yeah. And if there's something um, other than mm -hmm. campaign finance, mm -hmm. see if we can tackle those. What should be done with unspent contributions? Just keep an account forever, spend them, put them somewhere else. Yeah. Good question. Um, that's where I said it can't be, uh, it has to be spent for political purposes. So, for example, if you spent $300 of your own money, your name and address and amount is going to show up on that report. If you get to the end of the year, you're done, you won, you didn't win, you have $200 left or $300 left, you can pay yourself back. On the year end, there's expenditures and it says loan repayment. So if you've spent money, there's money back, you can pay yourself back. Um, if you've already done that or you didn't spend any of your money and there's still money left, you can 
political purposes are you can give it to another candidate you can give it to um a party uh, any kind of candidate statewide legislative judicial another school board candidate uh, but it just can't be um you know to fill your car with gas or to give it to you know a homeless shelter even though that would be really nice it just has to be for political purposes and that has to be spent or expended by uh december 31st or else they they have to file again the following year end so it doesn't happen a lot only in the bigger campaigns that they just always have money in their bank account Not seeing anything too general in our list, but I don't know if anyone has anything other than campaign finance. Oh, if I am I hearing that if I buy my own yard signs, I must log my own contributions in a separate checking account. When they're your own, that's tough. I know I know what the legislature is wanting. Just keep track of what you spent, for example, on the signs. And let's just say you spent $250. Then on the report, you would just simply have uh, contributions coming in, your name, address, $250 on whatever day you paid that bill. And then at the end of the year, it's going to have expenditures and it's going to say uh, for the operations for miscellaneous for advertising then you would put that 250 dollars under advertising because you're that's what it would fall under but if it's just your money nothing else coming in if it was me i wouldn't get a, a entirely separate bank account it's just your money that's a good question mm -hmm. And I think I have, do they have my direct number if they have a question on that? On Your anything? office number? I give that. Yeah, I have one. Mm -hmm. I have put this down because it's, it's a new, they can either call 328-4146 or my direct one is 328-4456. It's a new one. Okay. I have the. And if 4146 will thing. get to me, it's just we're in a tree so sometimes I get it and then other times another person will get it but if they have campaign finance they can call 328-4456. Mm -hmm. Yeah we have that first one there we can get list yeah. both of them listed. Okay. Be good. Mm -hmm. I forget about that one that comes straight to me now it's a new one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you want to explain a little bit of that um, excel spreadsheet that will be coming out too? Oh yes. Uh, Good job. Um, I love it. Basically, the Excel sheet, all you have to do up on the top is put in your election date. If it's, you know, June with the county, fine. If it's a different one, you plug that in and it's going to change all the dates underneath where it's going to say, uh, it talks about campaign finance, it talks about candidate filings, it talks about notices that go uh, in the paper. Uh, when to get election workers. It's just awesome. You just put in one date and it uh, figures out your timeline and, and what has to be done by when. I think this will be a really fantastic resource um, for business yes. managers as we start the election season, you know, in 2024. Um, but that will be up on our website and we'll send it out to, to all the districts as well. Yes. So yes. it'll be very exciting. I think it'll be very helpful. But other than that, um, any other questions here for Leanne? All right.
hopefully it's just understandable and you're not mm-hmm. quiet because you don't want to ask questions but it's <laughs> well you know if anything comes up we it's yes. it'll be easy to get a hold of you we'll get your information up on there um you know short and sweet too mm-hmm. i um think it'll be helpful to clear some of this stuff up but thank you guys for joining us today and a big thank you leanne for providing yeah. us with helpful information and resources too. I'm excited to get that all out. Um, Please feel free to contact her for further information. And then we'll get that listed on our website, like we said, as well as the recording and supplementary information as well um, on the events page under the Brunch and Learn webinar series tab, which will be up soon, probably just within, I don't know, a few hours here. And then I will be sending that information, like I said, too. Um, we will not have a brunch and learn in October because it is convention season. So hopefully we will all see you in uh, October 26th and 27th in Bismarck. So have a great rest of your week.